Germany 2006, the World Cup Championships. Welcome to Germany. Bienvenue en Allemagne. Bienvenidos en Alemania. England went there believing they could win the tournament for the first time in 40 years. They've got the best team we've had for a long time, so hopefully we'll get in there and we'll win. For Germany, it was the greatest event since the East and West were unified. It that evening, some England supporters stood back from the celebrations. They'd found a place to drink and their chants were about belittling other countries. Brazilians were also in Nuremberg, following a win over Croatia. But when they tried to join the fun, they were roundly abused. All the while, the police stood in the background. The majority of hardcore English hooligans may have been prevented from reaching Germany. The banning orders saw to that. But they were replaced by something else, lager lads. I think when the tournament started, the group of people I was most interested in was the lads, who were out for uh, a party time, but if some trouble happens, they'll be right in the middle of it. And I think that's what we've seen through the championship. We've seen that group uh, constantly in the thick of things and they've just been totally antisocial and, and loutish. This the subculture. It, it is this misguided loyalty. Nobody's trying to antagonise or do anything. So I, I wonder what's beneath all this. Is it, is it football? Is there something else going on that we don't know about? What are the, what are these people being loyal to? Because I, I can't find the cause that they're rallying behind. It isn't football. <laughs> Their behaviour was not dissimilar from anything witnessed in our town centres at the weekend. Their anger was directed at anyone. All you're bothered about is getting your fucking silly little story. Look at you, just standing around here waiting for fucking, these fucking scumbags. Yo, are you English? Are you English? You're betraying your own fucking people, fuck it. Conflicts ingrained in human nature. You know, if we stripped ourselves down and took all our nice computers away and our nice cars and our comfy chairs and put us all together as we were thousands of years ago, what's the first thing we're going to do? Fight over that stick because we can make a fire with that. We're animals. Welcoming you to the capital of the Rhineland and to Germany's fourth largest city. It should be an English-type atmosphere this evening. Halfway through the tournament, and England's travelling roadshow moved to Cologne. <laughs> Fans were here for the final first-round game against Sweden, opponents we haven't beaten in 38 years.
In amongst the crowd were hooligan gangs from across England. Gangs from the lower divisions of English football are always well represented when the national side plays abroad. The smaller clubs come from like little towns, little cities, where they've had no opportunity to mix it with the big boys. Your Burnleys, your Carlisles, your Huddersfields. Teams like that which never get the opportunity to watch their club side in Europe. Drunken England fans overran the statues in Cologne's historic square. German police didn't want to inflame the situation, which some considered a mistake. If I was police commander back in the UK, I think I would have wanted my officers to, well, I would have instructed my officers to take some, some action against some individuals. Um, the very difficult balance between being over tolerant and not trying to instigate some kind of trouble. An England fan injured himself falling from a statue. Medics tried to help, but were hampered by the crowd. The lads fallen from up here. We've called the police in to help out. They've come in with all the helmets on. Next thing you know, idiots are throwing bottles at them. Fifteen police officers were injured in a volley of glass bottles thrown by English thugs. English hooligans gained strength in numbers and urged each other on, surging forward, determined to cause a riot. But the police here adopted tougher tactics than those previously seen. because I've come over first time watching England away because of how good the fans have been. Caught up in the violence, an innocent England supporter became separated from his son. When he tried to breach police lines, he was temporarily blinded with pepper spray. At a local school on the eve of the game, the official England Supporters Club entertains students with a few football songs. Visits like this helped to build bridges. Youngsters learned not all England fans were hooligans. very conscious that we've got a negative reputation as England fans. We can have an argument whether we deserve that reputation or not, but the fact is we've had a negative reputation for the last 10 or 20 years. By doing efforts like this, we begin to turn those negatives into positives. Organisers had put a lot of work into this and were dismayed by the previous night's violence. Oh, oh, oh. 
hooligan, he's too polite to turn for them. They're bullies, they're school bullies who want to assert the fact that they're here and they want to ruin it for the rest of us. We want to be the most welcome guests at the party. That doesn't stop me wanting England to win and preferably to beat Germany. I'm just as passionate as any fan. But I will not accept this idea that patriotism is dragging your country's reputation through the street, which is what those people are doing. Back on the streets of Cologne, and it was match day. There was a huge influx of England fans, and the mayor had a warning. We don't want to have uh, people who come, uh, come with, with, uh, uh, with no friendly manner, with, with violence, with attacks, and with, with fighting ideas. That is not what we want to have in the city. If there are young people, uh, or older people, uh, who, who, who do not behave as we want and as, as it uh, is good for football, they have to be punished, of, of course. And he was true to his word. When 45 known German hooligans were spotted in the city, they were immediately arrested. But there were many more who'd managed to evade the police and they'd come to fight the English. We have a large number of hooligans. Some of these uh, do consider the English as their preferred enemies or counterparts for brawls. These foreign two-bob firms think that because England have 3,000 hardcore fans banned, that they will be walked over, walked upon. Let's clear England out of the way. This is our chance. The Poles, the Swiss, for Christ's sake, and the Germans think there'd never been a better opportunity to take on the English. They can bring it on, can't they? There were English hooligans there too. Always. <laughs> Members of Huddersfield's youth firm had made it to Germany. Steve Hunt was in the middle of a story about nearly coming to blows with a gang from Cardiff. What the mother is it, right? Cardiff brought a thousand or what? All right. <laughs> they were like, no, 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 give us your number, give us your number, I'll get a coach on. I said, well, you, don't need, over there. you don't need a, a number, just fucking come and we'll, be, we'll have it with you. Steve's brother, Andy Hunt, was there. And this is Gavin Buckley. They went off to watch the match on television in a local bar. It's called the Rhine Energy Stadion when FC Köln play. We've got a ground which has been completely redesigned for this World Cup. Oh, it's gone down. That looks pretty serious to me. Here's Joe Cole. Dipping volley. Oh, it's down. singing a bit too soon. Oh, what a tangle! And it's in! It's gone in, it's 2-2! Two -two. We haven't done enough to have won the match today. You know, there's obviously worrying signs for the future. After the final whistle, violence broke out in the city. An England fan threw the first punch. They were trying to attack German supporters who gathered in the main square. Under the now familiar hail of bottles, the police separated the warring factions. Huddersfield's youth firm were on the front line. Stephen Hunt urged others on to greater violence. Huddersfield was still at the forefront of the trouble.
police cleared the square and arrested over a hundred troublemakers, mostly Germans. Former hooligans claim that fear and adrenaline are addictive. You can get treatment for anything, alcohol, gambling, drugs, sex. You know, there's no counsellors that are prepared to sit down with us and say, right, tell me about it. What's your problem? My problem is I can't get football violence out of my head. In amongst the crowd was Ronald Kirsch, an international hooligan Mr. Fix-It. He organises fights between hooligan gangs across Europe. I was a good German fan when they came in this way. It was about nearly 300 dollars. Really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice affair before the uh, old boys got some around here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Take the old boy and run through. That's it. I made a 56 figure and through. Yeah. And I was a small scuff on the train to England. Kirsch was disappointed. He said the police tactics of preventative arrests were spoiling his fun. We were in Dortmund for the Germany Poland game. Were you there? Yeah, of course. <laughs> you got to be, haven't you? You know, I was, was, was totally 80 bolster, firm, 70 arrested before because we got the pre arranged fight in Oberhausen. Oh, yeah? And the, the top firm, the coach was stopped, 60 boys. No way. And 10 10 boys from uh, Warsaw was also stopped. Oh, uh, shit, they. Customary wobbles along the way, but England made it through to the knockout stage. Well, when is this English team going to get a grip on this World Cup? England's penultimate game was in Stuttgart in southwest Germany. This was to be the scene of the worst outbreak of hooliganism in the whole World Cup. Hundreds of English fans arrived three days early for the match against Ecuador. They commandeered steps overlooking the main square. It was like an old-fashioned football terrace, and having gained the high ground, they set about abusing passers-by. A small band of Tunisians was caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. They'd been mistaken for Turks and assaulted by drunken thugs who threw beer and bottles. Turks are reviled by some fans following the stabbing of two lead supporters in Istanbul six years ago. They were chased down the steps and attacked again. The police decided to crack down. Over 130 English fans were surrounded. It was a very aggressive atmosphere. They were throwing bottles and singing loudly. We considered this to be dangerous to other citizens who were walking around. So I decided to arrest these troublemakers. Having lost their patience, they detained everyone. It was the first time preventative arrests were used against England supporters. Our undercover team was caught in the middle and were among the first to be detained. It was a long walk to the waiting police van. They were read their rights, cuffed, and put in the back of the vehicle. A Millwall supporter was about to join them. Hello, 
It would be a long night in the cells. Those arrested were all released the following morning and told to leave the city. The police had laid down a marker. No longer would they tolerate English troublemakers. They would treat the English in the same way as they had neutralized the Germans and the Poles. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Behave or be arrested. While England fans were in Stuttgart to see their team play Ecuador in the knockout stage of the tournament, German interest centered on their match with Sweden. A vast crowd gathered to watch the game on giant screens in the city center. There was huge pride in the national flag, something not seen in Germany for many years. But behind the scenes, there were concerns. Fearing that English thugs would wreak havoc, British police advised their host to close the steps. What we said was there's, there's a, the steps is going to be another, a congregational area again. You can consider whether you, whether you wish to close them off, uh, deny access to people. It's an option. It was an option that uh, wasn't taken. You know that's a, a public area. It's, it's, you cannot just say nobody can go there. We are living in an open society, uh, in an international community, so we do not want to, to, to clothe everything. Germany won 2-1, much to the disappointment of the English contingent who wanted the host nation to lose. They'd reclaim the steps, as predicted. When thousands of German supporters began filing back into town, they subjected them to a torrent of abuse. As the beer continued to flow, their behavior deteriorated. In an act of provocation, this man spat on the German flag. It worked, and soon punches and chairs were flying. The situation developed into a standoff between the two sets of supporters. Some desperately tried to get away. It was about to become a full-scale riot. Belatedly, the police moved in and lashed out at anyone within range. In the middle of the mass disorder, beer continued to be sold in large quantities. There were bars that I would have shut, but just around the corner you've got street sellers selling bottles of beer anyway. In Stuttgart, on average, they drank 17 litres of beer each. Riot police restored order with pepper spray and batons. The softly, softly approach of earlier games was a thing of the past. There's no way just 
to react as, as normal people, you know, to discuss and say, it's, uh, please be, behave normal, otherwise you have serious consequences. There is no way like this. It's only the way to show the, the, the power of the police with a dress, uh, with this protecting dress, um, showing a very strong mass of, of policemen, that it's clear if you behave um, and try to resist, you will be the loser. At the bottom of the steps, a Turk was assaulted. He'd lost his glasses in the attack. Drunken England fans refused to allow him to recover them. They even took his photograph as a sick souvenir. So the police began a carefully orchestrated operation to pick out the ringleaders one by one and sent in snatch squads to make arrests. Dozens were led away, some so drunk they could hardly stand. This was alcohol-fueled yob culture. There may have been fewer hardcore hooligans, but the presence of so many drunken thugs was worrying to the British police. We've made huge steps in controlling organised violence. Um, that, has, that side of things, in general, has been a success. I think the next step is the antisocial louts that refuse to take any cognizance of any authority, laws, regulations, drink to excess. Generally, people you wouldn't want to live next door to. Now, if they start to associate themselves with football, as they associate themselves with the nighttime economy across the UK, I think we, as a society, have got real problems. Nearly 400 England fans were taken into custody. Just a few days earlier, the Germans had been honouring them as the best in the world, but their love affair with the England's World Cup entourage was over. The following day, England met Ecuador. On the ground, police mounted another huge operation to ensure the tournament was not consumed by the English disease. Well, it really is a sweltering day in Stuttgart. It's about Rooney's fitness, it's about the formation that England are going to play, and substitutions and the use of them. And so far, it's torture. And there are no excuses out there, none whatsoever. Don't let that frustration boil over Wayne. Moore is crouching a yard in front of the goal line. Beckham comes forward, right footed. Head to a goal and it's into the net. David Beckham has scored for England. He did deliver. That is why he's in the team. That part in towards Wayne Rooney. Rooney trying to squeeze through two defenders. Falls over goalkeeper as the ball. The throw in and I make it now. We've played the three minutes and it's all over. Here in Stuttgart, England have stumble their way really over the finishing line here the fans celebrated but some were out of control it was a culture of excess taken beyond the level of acceptable behavior on the steps were Andy Hunt and Gavin Buckley of Huddersfield's youth firm they were reveling in a close encounter they'd had with the police Huddersfield's Stephen Hunt was also there. 
and Steve Cornell, who'd been arrested the previous night and released only on the condition he stayed out of town. Like many others, he ignored the warning. The poor performances of England on the field didn't dampen their fans' celebrations. Only the Portuguese now stood in the way of the team reaching the last four. Will this uh, compact arena in Gelsenkirchen be remembered as a gateway to the semi-final? Or as England prepare now to come out, will it be a backdoor to World Cup oblivion? There were scenes that you wish England were not associated with. And the looks on some people's faces, even hatred. Uh, and, and really, the moral leadership of some of the parents that I saw here was hugely disappointing. Not many chances, not many opportunities, and it's uh, pretty tense and pretty nervy. Probably the most disappointing thing I've seen at this championship was a, a young boy of about eight years of age singing 10 German bombs. Where do we go from here with people like that? The referee has gone to his pocket. He's red! He sent Rooney off! To stamp down hooliganism once and for all, you'd have to get every male between the age of 14 and 40 and chop their arms and legs off. Whistle has gone at the end of extra time. The World Cup quarter final in which England have played with 10 men since the 62nd minute has gone to penalties. The England team suffered from poor management. The same could be said of the hooligans. They didn't have effective leadership, which was good. And I think the challenge to us now is to make sure that if any potential leaders try and put their heads above the parapet, that we're on top of them and make sure they don't uh, succeed. The vast majority of England fans behaved impeccably. Police tactics and banning orders seemed to work. But in two years' time, thousands will travel to Austria and Switzerland for the European Championships. Will that be the next venue for England's shame? Investigating allegations that water companies put profits before customers, Panorama asks, whose water is it anyway? Sunday at 10.15, here on BBC One.